In this video, I will go over the two ways that we generally make scale bars in LASX. So to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm going to double click on this bar and make the image take up my whole screen. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is hit annotations one time, and now we have the full annotations menu. Now I'm going to click this draw scale bar icon and I will draw my scale bar in this corner here. Okay, so you can see that I randomly drew a line. If I want to change the properties, I will select single ROI. These little dots appear next to my scale bar. I will right click and click properties. Now I can adjust the scale bar as I want. So then let me put in 200 microns and a zero angle because I want it to be straight. I can also select whether I want to show the bar ends and also show the label. I have some options here. I can select the color and also the font. So usually these are a little bit small. So I'm gonna go ahead and click a 24 point font. And you can also add bold, italic, or underline. The most important thing when you're done with that scale bar before you export is to select this icon again, the select single ROI, so that the little dots disappear so it's no longer editable. If you want to move it now, you can go just go back and select it and move it. Now for those of you who watch my export video, you'll know that we can also export with a scale bar. And to do that, we right click on the image select export image and click the scale bar option. So next to the scale bar, we have this dot, dot, dot. And here we can choose between different options. Uh, the first thing is to choose the mode. One is free configuration and the other is adaptive. Adaptive means it'll choose for you what it thinks is the best scale bar. I often use free configuration because I want to be able to make my own choice about the units that I'm using and how big the scale bar is. So for instance, I'm going to choose 200 microns so that we can have the same uh, units on both scale bars. I can choose the thickness of the line. I can choose what the position of the scale bar. So I'm gonna put this one in the left-hand corner. I can choose the foreground color, the background color, or make it transparent. Um, I can make a horizontal or vertical or a crosshair scale bar. And I can also choose what size of the bar ends I want to make. In terms of font, I will also choose 24 so that we can have the same size on both and you can see the difference between them. And when we're done, go ahead and click close. Unfortunately, you do not get a preview of the scale bar before you export it. So that's why I'm going to show you both of them. Um, I'm going to choose my destination, which is the, the desktop. Uh, you, you, of course, you can save it anywhere. Don't forget to check the annotations bar if you want to export the scale bar that you drew earlier. And I'll go ahead and press save. So I'll go to my desktop and I can see my TIFF here. I'll just double click on it. And now you can see the differences. Maybe I'll zoom in. You can see the differences between the two scale bars. The one on the right that I drew is fairly thin. Um, remember, I couldn't change the thickness of that line. Um, whereas the one on the left is the one I burned in from my export menu. And while I could make the line thicker, I couldn't place it. Um, it goes right flush against the corner. And so it is a little bit hard to see sometimes. And for that reason, I like to make the bar ends quite large so that it sticks out from the corner. So you can see the pros and cons of these two scale bar options. And the nice thing is because LASX lift files are embedded with the metadata, you never really have to worry about making the scale bars until the very end. And so when you're ready to make your figure. So in that way, you can save the step for last and then go ahead and play with the option that you think will work best for your images.